very good and uh, now let's try to use this to solve the Poisson's equation okay so so now we have these basis functions and remember in Poisson's equation we have the aij's being the integration of the derivative of a pair of basis functions plus a boundary term right and in particular we are if we have the zero Dirichlet boundary condition so if we know u at 0 is equal to u at 1 equal to 0 what do we know about these linear combination coefficients so if we want to if we want to represent a u of x equal to a summation of i goes from uh, 0 to n ui of phi i of x we know that the first term can be zero can be removed from this linear combination and the last term can be removed from the linear combination right so essentially the effect of the this particular boundary condition is reducing the dimensionality of the linear space it reduces the first and last basis to be redundant Right? You don't need any contribution from the base first basis and you don't need any contribution from the last basis. Or equivalently, you can el eliminate these two functions from the basis set. So then we basically, instead of i goes from 0, we have i goes from 1 to n minus 1. Right? So that removes uh, two basis functions. two basis functions okay now once we remove these basis functions we only have the interior head functions whose whose values are zero at both x and x equal to zero and x equal to one so so the so the boundary terms the boundary terms we have phi j times the der derivative of phi i at 0 and 1 is equal to 0 for all the interior points for the all the interior basis functions right for for j equal to 1 all the way to n minus 1 phi j times the derivative of phi i to x is equal to 0 so we have a i j is equal to integration of uh, phi i dx and the derivative of phi j dx so we only have a i j equal to that we also have b j equal to uh, no derivative just the phi j times f dx okay so let's figure out what this matrix and the right hand side is so for the matrix we are looking at the integral of the derivative of the product uh, the, pro uh, the integral of the product of the derivative of two basis functions and because of the a locality of the basis functions so both phi i and phi j are non-zero only in two adjacent elements so that ensures the sparsity of the matrix sparsity means if for most pairs of i and j's for most entries of the matrix the, the value <laughs> of the entry is equal to zero why is that the case because if i and j are not neighbors or their support 
the region in which they are not they are non-zero has no overlap, then their product is going to stay zero over the entire domain. Right. So, so remember we have if this is x i, this is x j. We have many uh, subintervals. X i. If you think of the derivative of x i, uh, phi x. So, so this is phi i. This is phi j. They are both hat functions. The derivative of the derivative of phi i and phi j are like what? The derivative of phi i is a constant positive value here and a constant negative here, and zero everywhere else. And the derivative of phi j is positive here, negative here, and zero everywhere else. So if you multiply the derivative of phi i with the derivative of phi j, the product is zero in the entire domain because there is no interval in which both of the derivatives are non-zero. So for most of pairs of i and j, uh, a i j is going to be zero. a i j is only non-zero when i and j are close enough. How close do they need to be for this entry to be non-zero? Well, of course, yeah. They have to be immediate neighbors in this case, right? So if they are immediate neighbors, one of phi i is like that, uh, phi j is going to be like that. So they have one element of overlap in which the product of the derivatives are going to be non-zero. Or if i is equal to j, right? If i and j are equal, then the derivative are the same and they are non-zero in two adjacent intervals. So a i j non-zero if i minus j absolute value less or equal to one. Right? They are either immediate neighbors or they are the same. So if a matrix is non-zero only for absolute value of i minus j less or equal to 1, how does the sparsity pattern of the matrix look like? It's going to be a tridiagonal matrix, right? OK, so good. Let's try to construct this tridiagonal matrix for, um, for one-dimensional space. All right. So here again, let's use the interval x to be link link space zero one and uh, n. Uh, let's choose n to be just a ten to start with. N equal to ten. Okay. So we have. Uh, we actually only have nine intervals in this case, right? Because x uh, goes from 0 to 1, and there are nine intervals in between. So let's choose n equal to n equal to 9, right? Okay, so on that space, we have nine basis functions. If we know the solution has zero boundary conditions. If we know uh, the solution has non-zero boundary conditions, we need more basis functions. Now we have nine basis functions. We want to construct the matrix A, which is, let's set 0, 9 in the beginning, right? So we know most of the entries are 0, so we set it to be 0. Let's first construct the diagonal entries. So how big are the, how big are the diagonal entries of this matrix, which corresponds to i equals to j. So the diagonal entries are uh, entries corresponding to a i i is equal to integration from 0 to 1 
the derivative of x of phi i is squared. And we know it is non-zero only in two intervals. Either the interval from x i minus 1 to x i, and the interval x i to x i plus 1. Right. And what is the value of one. what? One. This is equal to one? one. One over delta x, right? One over x i minus x i minus one. And this is minus one over x i plus one minus x i. Right. So in this case, all our x's are the same. But uh, we're going to evaluate dx anyway, so it's x2 to n minus x1 to n minus 1. And now uh, we have the squared values in both domains. And we also want to multiply this by the length of this integral. So, so after multiplying by the inter interval, which is xi minus xi minus 1, the square is gone again. And once we multiply by this interval, uh, the minus 1 is gone and the square is gone. So, so this aii is equal to xi minus xi minus 1 plus 1 over xi plus 1 minus xi. Right? So this is aii. So our dx uh, right now is the length of right so so this is a uh, uh, aii is going to be a summation between two adjacent intervals so i think uh let me see right okay so i i made a mistake here when i'm constructing the matrix a so, so should the matrix A be a length, be a nine by nine matrix or an eight by eight matrix? It should be an eight by eight matrix, right? Because I only have, oops, I only have uh, uh, n minus one uh, interior grid points. Okay, so it's an eight by eight matrix. And uh, so the diagonal entries of A are, uh, I should be making, so diag is a function that, that constructed a diagonal matrix from the uh, a vector, should be dx, so 1 over dx 2 to n plus 1 over dx 1 to n minus 1. So A has its diagonal entries assigned, right? So they are all 18. Now let's figure out the off-diagonal entries of A. Okay, the off-diagonal entries of A, AI, I plus 1, is going to be equal to an integration from 0 to 1, uh, the derivative of phi i times the derivative of phi j, which is i plus 1, partial x dx. And this, <coughs> because phi i is non-zero at interval between x i minus 1 and x i plus 1, and phi i plus 1 is non-zero in the interval between phi i and phi i plus 2. So their product is only non-zero between xi and xi plus 1. And their derivatives are what? This derivative in between xi and xi I minus 1 is something we derived before. Minus 1 over xi plus 1 minus xi. Well, oh, this derivative is positive because it's on the left of the basis. It's 
but the value is the same. It's also one over the same interval length.